funny. Okay, so today I'm gonna be doing kind of a random, non-requested, but kind of requested video. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about my makeup routine or just general stuff I have going on on my face. So I thought instead of like going through each video and like commenting back, like replying the same thing to a bunch of different comments, that I would just make like an overreaching video and hopefully like everyone who wants to know or who cares will watch this video. Yeah, yes. Probably the most questioned activity on my face that I've been asked recently is about my eyelashes and honestly I don't see anything like more impressive in my last couple videos than I normally have. I haven't changed up anything and I'm not wearing false eyelashes right now. The mascara that I've been using, but I've literally been using this for probably like six months now, is Maybelline's The Falsies Volume Express. The only thing that I can think of that might be why you guys can tell a difference is they made a new applicator and I don't really know what they call this thing, but, and I don't even know if this is coming through, but it like bends, I don't know, it's it's cut like halfway through the applicator and so it like flicks or bent I don't know it's like a bendy straw in the middle of my applicator of my mascara which almost is kind of like gross if I think about it too much I'm trying to just push it out of my brain now I don't know but that freaky little thing is like maybe doing a better job but I will go ahead and tell you guys my favorite brand of false lashes is Eyelure and it's a brand that I get from Ulta and I haven't seen it anywhere else. It's reasonably priced. I can't, I haven't bought a set. I thought I had a spare set because normally I always keep like one unused box around in case I want to get really festive one day and just glue some fake hairs on to my eyes. They're in between like $3.99 a pair or $4.99 a pair. My favorite kind in that brand is the double lash and what it actually is is it's like two pairs of false eyelashes glued together already for you to make one pair. I really like the drama and the volume. I guess the other reason I haven't put them on in a really long time is about two Twitter default photos ago like not this one or the one I had before that but ye olden days like in ye olden days of summer I had a pair on and I actually was like verbally abused by this 13 year old and and she just like tweeted at me and she was like your eyes are really disgusting like I was just like no really like I was like where are your parents like do they know that you're an internet heathen I don't know it was like absurd and frightening and I was like what is happening to humanity I got like bullied into not wearing eyelashes by a 13 year old I don't know so second most frequently asked question about my makeup routine lately how long was that intro sentence I just spat out right there is about my foundation because I have switched I think I told you guys like it was in an FOTD like two weeks ago. The first one I did, the wearable dramatic that my friend at the Mac store did, and she recommended that I change foundations. And I think I told you guys wrong. I told you guys that I was wearing NW25, but I wasn't. I was wearing NW20. And she, my friend at the Mac store, recommended that I go to NC15, which is the lightest shade of foundation that they have. And I'll tell you what, like, I kind of have been having mixed feelings about it, like, on my face in reality. Like, on camera and in photographs, it's been looking really, really nice. Or it looks like it really really matches my skin tone well but in public like IRL I don't really feel like it has enough coverage for me I don't know if I'm just brainwashed to like because I used to be a hardcore addicted spray tanner and then I was just like uh-uh not no more I don't know I just like don't like to tan at all anymore so I don't know if it was just because like my routine was always like yes dark is good and now I just can't get over it because I mean it does like match my neck and everything but I do have a little bit of Roatia around um like right here and a little bit into my nose which you can't really tell I don't think like on the camera or once I put my blush on but I don't know like in real life like I'm really really shy about my freaking nose you guys and like when I put this foundation on I just don't feel like it covers my nose enough I don't know I just think if I put more foundation on it that maybe my nose will disappear and I'll just be like a face with no nose 
that would be great. But I did try a little bit of a different strategy today because I am a hardcore um, makeup sponge applicator for foundation. I just cannot get anything else through my brain. But I did pat it in today because that's what my friend Katie recommended is that I start patting in my foundation instead of like rubbing it in, which just sounds like really gross and childish. But that's just what I've always done. I'm like, yeah, it looks so good. So I have switched to this and I also switched. I'm like a hardcore fan of the MAC Studio Moisture Tint. Number one, because it has SPF in it. And number two, because it was always just a really easy thing. Like even days when I don't want to put like my whole makeup on, I usually can just put a little dab of this and it'll kind of like cover up my acne scars and just like stuff that I don't want people to see. And I used to actually buy medium dark in this because I literally just put maybe like a dime size and then like rub it all in and like down my neck. I don't know. I have mixed feelings about this. Like I'm like, was I one of those people? people that wore foundation that was too dark. I don't know. You know, I don't know. I don't know. So I switched this to the lightest one too, but I just like almost don't feel like it does jack diddle for me anymore. I saved the packaging and I might return this at least for one shade darker because I don't really know. Like I've used this twice and I'm just like, well, this does nothing. I don't know. I have really mixed feelings about this because I feel like it is the the appropriate shade, but I also feel like it's not doing anything. How many times did I just say the same thing? I don't know how I feel about NC15. Mixed feelings about that too. Like I feel like it's appropriate, but I also like don't feel like it is enough of a mask for my face. So I may bump this up one shade darker. I doubt that I will, just because like when somebody tells me that I'm doing like the professional right thing. I'm just like, oh, I better stick with that. I don't know. I don't know. So you guys tell me what you think. The next most asked thing that I've gotten a lot lately is my lipstick. And I kind of have been like running around and like going out a lot more lately. And so I've been looking for something like not as cakey. So like maybe if I accidentally make out with somebody, that may sound trampy. Like, I mean, the same person, but maybe, I don't know. I just, I keep making it sound worse every time I extrapolate on this point. Anyway, um, I wanted to find something that was kind of like more like those commercials, you know, where people can like put tape on their mouths and like make out and like, I don't know, like drink from a water fountain and then like wipe it like cowboy style with the back of their hand and like nothing gets on their hand and their makeup still looks flawless. So that's kind of like what I've been looking for for my life. I and mean, I kind of have been using a mixture of products to achieve that desired effect. The very first thing that I've been using is the Yves Saint Laurent Laurent Laurent. <laughs> We're on the swamp, okay? That's how we do it on the swamp. We just say things in whatever accent we feel. And I, I butcher this every time, so I hope y'all are ready for this. The, ew, got a little foundation on that. That's hot. Mmm. You look so good. Anyway, I've been using the Yves Saint Laurent <laughs> Voluptual Sheer Candy. I always say that wrong every single time I say it. This is in shade six. I got this from, ooh, that was upside down. I got this from Sephora. It is shade six in like luscious cherry or some crap like that where they always want to like make everything sound both sexual and fruity. So I've been putting that on like halfway through my makeup routine, like right after I put on my setting powder and after my foundation. I just put a light little layer of this on my lips because it is very moisturizing and it also gives me a good base color. Now I won't lie, this is $30. So if you're looking for a dupe of something similar, but like probably doesn't taste as good, I don't know. Like somebody told me that they thought it tasted like, like cat tinkle, but I think it's like a really charming. I wouldn't mind eating this. Like if I got hungry and I was like really Debbie, I would totally just nom nom on this. Anyway, some people love this product. Some people hate this product. I feel like it's a good dupe for this, but maybe like, I, I don't know. It's really moisturizing and it will also give you color. So if you want something that's more like $6 and not like 30, then you can go with the Revlon Lip Butter in color 35 or Candy Apple. Um, yeah, so that kind of does the same thing. But then once I've done all the other steps of my makeup, I layer two more products for my lips. The first being the Sephora Nano Lip Liner Pencil, and this is just in real red. I think they only have one red shade of in-house brand lip liner. So as you can tell, it's just a red lip liner pencil. And then the last thing that I'm 
totally obsessed with and I think I've mentioned it in one other video but I have to say thank you to my subscriber Salem Bambi again for recommending this product to me because I absolutely love it and it is a lip stain and it's Revlon's Just Bitten in Gothic. Now it does have like this balm attached to it but that is really grody like I don't ever want to put this anywhere near my mouth again because I made that mistake once and let's just say you don't want to do that twice. But I do love this side, which is the actual lip stain. It does look like a felt tip marker. I think in the other video I said this, the only thing I wish that it had was some kind of like astronaut magic inside of it. You know, like those astronaut pins that we used to all buy in droves in the 90s because it's like you can ride upside down in the water. And I was like, yes, I need that. Because like doing the bottom of the lip is really easy because like the liquid inside of the pin like seeps into the felt tip pen and you can just be like blah 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 but then when you go like to do the top of your mouth like all the liquid drains out of the felt tip so you kind of have to like put it on like upside down like some kind of like Cirque du Soleil freaky stuff yeah so and I don't even want to know what would happen if you like accidentally drew outside the line of your mouth line because you'd probably have this stain because this literally does like I've eaten pizza in this regime before and it really does not wipe off and the other great thing about this is it also does not wipe off when you drink out of a straw because let me tell you like I it's like one of my top 500 pet peeves is like when you're drinking out of a straw and it's just like this grody like lipstick falls all over like off of your mouth and onto the straw and it's just like a real freak show in public two more products to go let's just zip right on through. So the other thing that I get asked a lot is about how it looks like I had this like white or really like light stuff going on under my eyes. I think that's partially because I do use the Benefit under eye concealer which is kind of like a brightener and I think it kind of just brightens that whole like under eye area. But the other product that I use is another in-house Sephora product and it's the Jumbo Crayons and I'm I believe that these are meant to be a dupe for the Urban Decay ones because they pretty much look exactly alike except for you can get these for like 10 bucks instead of like 26 or 18 or whatever Urban Decay thinks that they need to charge everybody. So this is color 05 beige and it really works well for my skin tone. I'm not sure if it would work on people who aren't like ghostly disgustingly pale but if you are it kind of like just brightens your under eye just a little bit like if you're a total insomniac and you just can't sleep and function. I'll moi. Last product that I have to share with you guys. You may notice I have a pimple or what is commonly uh, or what is commonly referred to as a zit on my freaking forehead and I don't know like what is wrong with my life. I don't know. I kind of am breaking out lately and I think it's a combination because A, I can't stop washing my face obsessively with my freaking Clar Clarisonic Mia, whatever that spinning thing is. I don't know. I've fallen victim to its charm. I'm just like, yes, I'd like to scrub my face every 30 minutes. But I'm trying to moisturize because I think it's honestly like pimples driven from lack of moisture and also maybe like stress. I'm like, okay, stress. Really good concealer I found. I used to use the Murad concealer, but I'm slowly switching everything over that's like a facial thing. That makes no sense. Everything makeup is for your face. You know, my my wrist makeup collection. Everything that's kind of like a foundation or a powder or something like that. I've been switching to MAC products just because I like MAC products. And so I've recently tried this concealer and this is really good for people who are pale. It is the NC20 Studio Finish Concealer and this actually has SPF 35 in it. And the other really great thing about this product is it smells like a freaking swimming pool. It really smells like an actual swimming pool, and I like that. I think it's great. Whoa. I just dropped it, but it closed. It's okay. It's okay. I keep dropping everything. I should just start throwing my makeup at the camera and be like, look at it, guys. Look at it. I'm gonna get obnoxiously close to the camera so you can, like, just gaze at its ugliness. I think that this is a good mixture, um, plus Photoshop. I know people are like, God, honey, you're so fake. You Photoshop your pictures, and I'm just like, who does not? Photoshop their pictures. Who has like a semi-working knowledge of Photoshop? It's not like I have any Photoshop magic skills, but you better believe I'm using that retouch button, okay? People don't want to see this. And let me tell you, as I've told you many times, when you turn 26, you go crazy, okay? Like, if they had video shop for the whole video, you better believe. I'd be like those 
cheap photographs at the mall. Did y'all ever do that with your friends or is that just like a thing we do in the swamp? Because I know when you were in high school it was the deal. You would go to like the trashiest, that sounds bad, but they were in a mall, okay? It's like those mall photo places but you'd like go with your best friend and you'd wear like I don't know, like the most trendiest crap that you could buy from like Abercrombie and Fritch and you would just like, ugh, like do some like, ugh, like overly dramatic pose and then they would take your photo and then they would like airbrush your features away. It would be perfection and you would just like hand that out to everyone you'd want to make out with and that would signify that like not only did you somehow look perfect not in front of them but that you had friends so that they would want to date you. That sentence makes no sense but it did not work for me in high school. <laughs> I don't know. Did, did that, was that a shared experience? And then it was always like the stupidest background ever. It was like cosmic swirl. Well, that's pretty much all I was gonna tell you guys about today. I just thought I would like do, is this like some kind of official video? Like can I give it in a, can I give it a relevant title? My god, I sound like Carl's right now, like on Hipster Runoff. I'm like relevant guys, is it? Most used products or favorite products or like products for my everyday look. Like watch me just title this like ancient alien routine. That would make no sense. Swamp party. Um, I'm gonna stop now. I'm gonna shut up, okay? Just shut up. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, I have one last thing to do. Just because I promised all you guys and Tom Hanks that I would do this. And let me tell you, you don't break a promise to Tom Hanks, okay? Once you tell him you're gonna do something, you do it. <laughs> That conveniently went into my trash can. I don't think I'm doing it right. God, they made this look so easy and big. But that was in the 80s. Everything was easy in the 80s, including Rod Stewart. Oh, no, it just, it doesn't, it's lacking Hollywood magic. Okay, that's what it's lacking, but I tried. I could do it so much easier from this angle. Oh, but that's not, there's, there's, there's no action there. Oh, that was intelligent. That was on my toothbrush. I don't think I can brush my teeth with that anymore. Oh, look, at least it's great value. Like when is silly string not great value? I've got big giant globules of silly string to pick up now all over my bathroom, so I better let you go. As usual, please take a moment to subscribe, stay for the swamp party, and uh, I'll try and shoot silly string out of my mouth better next time. I hope you enjoyed my extra relevant makeup tips. If you want, you can comment down below. Let me know exactly what you thought of my semi-relevant makeup tips. You can like me on Facebook, facebook.com slash graveyardgirl, or you can tweet to me at graveyardgirl. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.